good morning good evening good afternoon guys and welcome back to my channel i hope you're having a beautiful day and that you're staying safe and that you guys are well and today i'm going to bring to you a little video that i feel like i need to make i can't not make this video so i'm going to explain how you can stay safe when you go open water training <laughs> So I'm going to explain why this video has come about. So I was on the I was on a call with Craig from Riot Sports, and he was explaining that he's had a lot of wetsuit fittings lately. People are taking up open water because obviously pools aren't open at the moment in Scotland, and. I don't blame people and I think this is an incredible thing for open water swimming as a sport and I said that to Richard um, and open water swimming has just especially in the past year it's just increased in popularity so so much and I think it's such a good thing especially for people's physical health people's mental health but I think it's so important that people do it safely and I wanted to make this video because I know a lot of people don't realize what it takes to be safe in the open water. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get the doom and gloom bit out of the way first. And I'm gonna say if you can't swim about I'd say a 400 meters continuously at least in a pool, just don't even bother. It's not worth putting yourself at risk and potentially causing harm to yourself because open water is so much more uncontrollable than in a pool and if you can't swim continuously in a pool you're not going to be able to do it in a lock so just don't put yourself at risk i also want to take the time out of this video to thank the guys over at suzu i think i'm pronouncing that right i will also leave their link below but thank you so much for giving me this beautiful t-shirt it says you are stronger than you think and absolutely love it and you guys know that I'm so passionate about mental health and I think that what they're doing is incredible and one day I would love to partner with them with mental health and sport and do something amazing because let's be real sport needs to change <laughs> so I thought what better way to explain how to stay safe in the open water than today I am here at Cross Michael in Dumfries and Galloway and I'm about to go for a swim so it will be the perfect time to explain what measures I take to make sure that I'm safe when I'm in open water and the first thing I'm going to recommend is join your local Facebook group so in not in Dumfries and Galloway but in Stirling there is a Facebook group for open water swimmers and I think that it's a super good group to be a part of, especially if you're going to get into west uh, wild swimming. And they often have like group swims so that you're not on your own, which links into my second point. Never go alone. Make sure that someone knows where you are. Make sure that someone knows where you're going. That's the same thing. <sighs> But make sure that you have someone with you, whether that's a shore spot or on land, someone in a boat or a paddleboard or in a kayak or something in the water with you, or even better still, another swimmer with you. So when I go, often I go with a friend on the paddleboard, but today I have at Cross Michael, they have a swim every Sunday and a, every Wednesday for anybody in Dumfries and Galloway. Basically, they have a safety boat. It's a controlled environment and it's super safe and you're not going to be on your own. So yeah, the Facebook group is amazing because you can just put up, oh, I'm going to Lock Ard and wondered if anybody would come and keep me company so that I don't drown or something <laughs> but yeah the Facebook group I definitely recommend it there will I'm sure there will be some for other areas so you've got your person with you and people know where you are the next thing is to get ready to swim so the most important thing is that you're swimming in an area that's not dangerous. So you want to pick an area that you know people swim at. So for me, I love to go... I I used to love to go to Gartmore Dam in Alloa. And it's beautiful to swim there. It's so clear. But lately, I think they've had algal blooms. So the main thing that a lot of people remember to look out for is algae and blue green algae can be so so damaging and obviously you don't want to be getting in any body of water that has blue green algae but 
You also have to consider undercurrents because it might look calm on the surface, but what's happening under the water is also kind of scary. And when I was in Tenerife, I got caught in an undercurrent and as a competent swimmer, I found it scary. So just just be aware of potential hazards so if there's a wire if there's like fisheries or if there's stuff like that also a tip that i never have thought of is if there are people fishing make sure you ask them where the line is because i was swimming the other day with uh richard and there was a guy who had a fishing line out and we both were like are we gonna get caught by a fishing line is he gonna catch a human rather than a fish so if there's people fishing ask them where the line is they'll always tell you people are friendly they don't want to catch human they want to catch a fish <laughs> the next thing to consider is cold water now we do live in scotland it's not not going to be the same temperatures as it would be in spain or france or places like this so just be aware that the water isn't going to be tropical coral reef vibes it's not cold right now it's around about 17 degrees which is warm but if you're not used to it be aware of it and cold water shock is a thing so my recommendation would be to try a wetsuit out now as i said before i was talking to craig from right sports and he was saying that he's had a lot of wetsuit things lately so the right sport guys i can't recommend them enough obviously this i am sponsored by them so take this as a sponsor but they do wetsuit hire and they also will fit them for you and they are fully safe with covid don't panic they wear masks and stuff they try not to touch you where they can but obviously wetsuit fittings they kind of have to check that you're wearing it right so i definitely recommend going there if you've never had a wetsuit before they will fit you they will make sure it fits right they also are very clued up on this stuff and i think that's what's so amazing about them craig doesn't do open water swimming but he knows what he's talking about so i would recommend going in in a wetsuit the first time because it's going to be a lot different to a pool pools are normally 20 i mean 27 degrees over and the lock's going to be about 17 degrees so it's a massive difference and it might be a shock to your system so just make sure that you're airing on the side of caution get a wetsuit rent one do whatever, but definitely go in a wetsuit first. Okay, next bit of advice, mirrored goggles. If you're outside, it might be sunny. In fact, we're in Scotland, so it's very rarely going to be sunny. But we still do get sunshine sometimes. Today we have sunshine. So make sure you have mirrored goggles or at least clouded goggles, like dark coloured goggles, because they're going to act like sunglasses. And if you wouldn't go out without sunglasses then why would you go out in the water without sunglasses sun goggles so obviously water reflects and you will get the water, the sun hitting you in the face it's not fun if you don't have mirrored goggles so get yourself some mirrored goggles again bright sports can hook you up also if you want a review on wetsuits i've done a review reviewing oh this is inside out but i've done a review reviewing the tia wetsuit in comparison to the blue 70 fusion wetsuit so definitely go and check that out it's quite an old video so excuse the awkwardness but it's quite informative i'm not gonna lie okay next piece of advice is a tow float you need to have a tow float people who don't have a tow float are just idiots so tow float it's like a bag again you can get them from right sport i put my car key in here and i also double line it so i put it in a ziploc bag just to make sure that it's not going to get water water in it but this just basically ties around your waist and it drags behind you and some places don't actually let you go in the water without them some places do but it's a safety thing but also a visibility thing so if there's any speedboats out there, you kind of don't want to get run over by a speedboat. It would be a bit embarrassing and also you'd probably be dead. Just make sure that you've got a tow float and it's also a handy place to put your car key because where well, are you going to put your car key kind of thing. <laughs> but again, they're pretty cheap. You can get them anywhere. But I think, don't, don't hold me to it. I think Loch Lomond, you can't go in without a tow float. 
so just make sure that you've got a tow float and some people put their phone in there i'd be too scared in case it leaked but yeah you could put your phone in there so if you're in a wetsuit the thing that gets coldest the most coldest is that a word the most cold um is your hands and your feet and your head so everything else is kind of covered by your wetsuit the thing i would say about hands and feet you can get gloves which are like neoprene gloves which are almost like wetsuit material and i think they're a little bit thinner but you can get them if you want them go for it if you're going to be going in colder times go for it i've never personally used them but i hear a lot of people wearing them the other thing that i'd recommend is wearing a double hat i've done a video on how to put a swimsuit on a swimsuit that would be a bit weird <laughs> how to put a swim hat on and if it's colder weather i will double hat so particularly in april time and september when it's starting to cool off a bit i'll double hat just to keep my head warm i don't want to be getting cold head because again cold water shock hypothermia blah 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 a video that i'd really recommend in terms of cold water shock would be uh ross edgley's cold swimming or ice swimming or whatever it is he's done one with matt does fitness and eddie hall um but he's really knowledgeable on the effects of cold water shock so definitely go and check them out i will link them again below so it's easy for you guys to find them okay so i'm just back my last tip is to take especially if you haven't been open water before to take some flat like to take some coke pepsi whatever diet pepsi whatever you want to call it or some people like ginger beer just because if you're not used to it it, it settles your stomach so i find that lock can uh if you're wanting to swim at lock hen i find that it's slightly i mean it doesn't upset my stomach but it certainly impacts it a little bit differently to up in scott like up in the trossachs um i think that's just because i'm not used to this water so i like to just put some i think it's diet coke or it might be pepsi max or something into a little flask reusable cup and then i drink it on the way home by that time it's flat so i usually put it in the bottle like the night before or the day before or the morning of and yeah it just settles your stomach so you obviously when you're swimming in the wild like fish pee and poo in it birds pee and poo in it any speed boats their petrol goes in it so obviously just i just like to be wary because i have had a really upset stomach from one place that i swam in when i was last year so just be wary of the stuff that's in the water and make sure that you're settling your stomach. So I definitely rate flat Coke. I'm not a fan of ginger beer, but supposedly ginger beer does the same thing. It's just a settle of your stomach. But also, this is going to sound grim, but Dioralite works amazing as well, even as a pre preventative measure. So they're my recommendations so i hope you enjoyed this video please be sure to give it a thumbs up if you did click the subscribe button to see more videos from me and i will see you guys in the next one bye guys